Okay, so we're now going to look at differentiating functions that are x to the power of n. So, thankfully, there is a quick way to differentiate these terms of the form x to the power of n, where n is a constant, without having to use first principles every time. Because I think you'll agree, this is quite a lot of work just to be able to differentiate one term. So we're going to actually see what this pattern is. And this is incredibly important that you know this. So if y equals ax to the n, where a is a constant and n is a constant, then dy by dx, the gradient function, is equal to n a x to the power of n minus 1. In other words, what you do is you multiply by the power and then reduce the power by 1. So let's just um, reiterate that. If we have y equals a x to the n, I'm going to multiply the whole thing by the power. So I'm going to multiply it by a n. So it's going to multiply by n, sorry. And I'm going to reduce the power by 1. So I'm going to change that power. So the things that changed, whoops, this is dy by dx. The things that changed there is I multiplied by the power and then I reduced the power by 1. OK, let's try it with some of these questions that we've got here. So when I do the right hand side, when I differentiate x to the power of 5, I'm going to multiply the whole thing by 5 because that's the power. And I'm going to reduce the power by 1 so it becomes a 4. And when I differentiate y with respect to x, I get dy by dx. OK, so this is differentiating is actually finding the gradient function. So I've differentiated this side and I've actually differentiated this side to get dy by dx. But it's the gradient function. OK, let's try the next one. So I'm going to have dy by dx because y, when you differentiate it, gives you dy by dx. I'm going to multiply by the power. So I would have 7 at the beginning. And I'm going to reduce the power by 1, so I get 7x to the power of 6. Pretty simple, those first two. Let's try this one. So I'm going to have dy by dx when I differentiate y. I'm then going to multiply by the 10. So I'm going to have 3 multiplied by 10. And I'm going to reduce the power by 1, so I get 30x to the 9. And I'm going to see maybe this one we can do straight away without doing the multiplication written down. So I'm going to multiply by the 6 to get 12, and then I'm going to reduce the power from 6 to a 5. I'm going to try a few more. So this works with other powers. It doesn't just have to be integers as well. It could be negatives. It could be positives. So this time, the power here is to the power of a half. And I'm not going to write dy by dx because the notation is f of x. So instead, I'm going to write f dash x. So I'm going to multiply by the power, which is a half, and I'm going to reduce the power by 1. So I'm going to have to do a half minus 1. Well, you should know that, but a half minus 1 is just going to be minus a half. So it's minus a half x to the minus a half. Now, if you wanted to, you could write this as a half multiplied by 1 over x to the half, which is 1 over 2 root x, if you wanted to go further. You don't necessarily have to, OK? So let's try this next one that we've got. This one's a general kind of one. It's y, so it's going to differentiate to dy by dx. Now I'm going to multiply the a by the power, which is a. So I'm going to multiply a by a to get a squared. And I'm going to reduce that power by 1. So I'm going to have a minus 1. If they look like this, this one that I have here, it is not in the form x to the power of n. So the first thing I need to do is I need to rewrite this. Rewrite so it looks like x to the power of n. Now you should know how to rewrite this. So because I'm rewriting it, I'm still going to say y equals. It will be x to the power of 6 all square rooted. So I'm putting it in its index form. And what you do there with the powers is you multiply them. So 6 times a half is 3, so it's just x cubed. Now I can differentiate it so that I get dy by dx is equal to multiply by the 3, which is the power, and reduce the power by 1 so that you get 2. Again, this one isn't in that standard form because of this big square root symbol. So we're going to have to rewrite it so that it looks like x to the power of n. 
So f of x is equal to, well, you can split this as two things. So you're going to have the square root of 49 multiplied by the square root of x to the power of 7. So I'm going to write that as x to the power of 7. The square root means to the power of a half. So the square root of 49 is 7. And this is going to be multiply these powers that you have here, which is the 7 and the half. 7 times a half is 7 over 2. We prefer to use fractions here. So now when I differentiate, I'm going to do 7 multiplied by the power. So it's going to be 7 times 7 over 2, which is going to be 49 over 2. But I'm just going to show you that 7 times 7 over 2 is 49 over 2. And we like fractions more than decimals. 49 over 2. And I'm going to reduce that power by 1. So I'm going to do 7 over 2, and I'm going to try and reduce that power by 1. Try and avoid using a calculator here. 7 over 2, minusing 1 it's going to be 5 over 2. You just take off those two halves. So you're going to have it as to the power of 5 over 2. And I'm pretty happy to leave it like that. I'm not really needing to do much further manipulation here. Now, again, this one doesn't look like x to the power of n. So it needs to make sure it looks like this. This rule that we've had here only works if it looks like this. Only if it looks like this. So let's go back and see if we can rewrite this. Well, this is x to the power of 1 divided by x to the power of 4, which is going to be x to the power of minus 3. So we can actually do this. I'm going to write f dash x. I'm going to multiply by the power. Now, the power is a negative number, so it's going to be a minus 3x. And I'm going to do minus 3, and I'm going to reduce it by 1. So I'm doing minus 3 minus 1. Please don't say minus 2. It's to the power of minus 4. OK, we're going to do one more over here. So I've got the um, x to the power of a half, and I've got the 8x squared. Now, I don't know why I was just going to copy the same thing out. The way I like to think about this is this is 1 over 8 multiplied by x to the half divided by x squared. That 8 belongs in the denominator. It's not going to suddenly come to the top and be like a, a big 8. It's still going to be an 8. So we have an 8. And the x bit that we've got here, well, we've got a half minus 2. So I'm just going to do that in a different color. We're trying to do a half minus 2. I could do that with a calculator, and I don't mind you using a calculator sometimes. But a half minus 2 is minus 3 over 2. So it's going to be x to the power of minus 3 over 2. Notice how it's an 8 and not an 8. So I'm now going to do f dash x. So I'm going to have the 8, which is still there. I'm going to multiply by the power, which is minus 3 over 2, and I'm going to reduce the power by 1. So I'm going to be doing minus 3 over 2, and I'm wanting to reduce that by 1. That is going to become minus 5 over 2. All we need to do now is simplify this bit that we've got at the beginning here. So that's going to be a negative overall, and it's 3 over 16 x to the power of minus 5 over 2. And again, I'm quite happy to leave it here with this negative index um, and with this sort of fractional index here and this one here. It's OK to leave it like that. If you wanted to, I suppose you could go on and say this is minus 3 multiplied by 1 over x to the power of 4. So it's minus 3 over x to the power of 4. But unless it tells you you need to do that, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing it. So you've got how many here? Six examples, ten examples of how you do these. You should now go and do lots and lots of practice from exercise 12c on this one.